Hey guys, this is Fei Wu from Faze World Media. Now, have you ever wondered how much money in terms of YouTube revenue and other types of revenue streams you would get from YouTube? This is a video series I've been wanting to do for a long time. I wanted to show you behind the scenes how each and every tab looks like in the past 90 days. Yes, I've only started monetizing, I think at around middle of April 2020 uh, during the pandemic. And after that, I wanna show you the overview, the reach, um, audience engagement, uh, views, watch time, analytics, and revenue broken down by month. Hey, before we get started, this video is sponsored by Restream, an application you can use to allow you to go live everywhere on 30 plus social media platforms. Now back to today's video. If we want to take a look at the channel analytics, what we need to do is click on the upper right hand corner, my channel icon, then you click on YouTube studio. By default, you will first arrive on channel dashboard. What I do immediately after that is click on go to video analytics right here, or you can click on this analytics button. This is where YouTube unveils all the secrets to you. And it's something that you can rely on the data and just to learn more in terms of what you can do better in terms of your existing videos, as well as planning on new videos. That part is super exciting, which means not only you can do better later, you can also potentially optimize on the videos you already have. Well, we're currently at about 6,100 subscribers as I'm recording this, and it's growing pretty fast. I'm growing at about, as you can see here, 1,200 new subscribers every month. And last month in August 2020, as you can see, there's an indicator saying I grew 370 more than usual. And also when you first get here, you'll get these overview type of information. Your video are getting more views from YouTube recommendations, which is yay. And my channel specifically got 111,000 views, which is more than the regular, I guess, 82,000 views uh, in 28 days. I don't know where the 8,900 comes from, probably from a long time ago uh, before we began uh, monetizing. Showing you the revenue that I've generated from the last 28 days, that is August 9th to September 5th to be exact and the total estimated revenue again this could be one to two days behind is one thousand one hundred and eighty five dollars rpm this is a new information to me so rpm means revenue per milli uh, and tells you how much you earn per thousand views to calculate your rpm your estimated revenue is divided by your total views in the same time period so this is my play uh, playback based cpm so playback cpm means effective playback based cost per um, milli and tells you how much advertisers pay per thousand monetized playback. Now let's take a look at monthly estimated revenue. The first month I earned $261. I didn't start monetizing until April 17th. So if you were to do the math, if I were to say monetize all the way through that entire month, I probably would have made somewhere between, uh, I would say around $500 to $550 or so. And my May earning was 789, as you can see on the screen. I had originally thought that maybe at some point it would just die down. My videos, especially the popular Zoom videos, would become uh, irrelevant, less popular, or so many other creators may have jumped on those topics and uh, people won't be able to find my content anymore. I was wrong. I was really, really thrilled to see this uptick in revenue earning as of the month of August. I also have other videos to show you guys to so talk about, you know, after you be, become monetized, how quickly, how soon you get your paycheck. So within the period, you can see here top earning videos as highlighted related to revenue, revenue sources. Um, my estimated ad revenue uh, comes from YouTube as the number you can see, but they're also just nine bucks of YouTube premium service, premium revenue as well. Um, ad types skippable video is 94 percent of the total revenue that's a lot um, and also display there are some of the other uh, auction based display bumper ads and non-skippable videos as well so i'm not really earning a whole lot i'm also not really turning on non-skippable videos for videos i don't think really deserve that will really need it with that said let's first take a look at under overview and then i'm going to skip over to each and every tab so you can see what's happening Hey, but before we get started, I definitely want to show you that everything you see by default is within the past 28 days. But to make it a little bit more exciting since I started monetizing so recently, let's switch that over to 90 days so you can see the trends. 
So within the past 90 days, I have a little bit short of 300,000 views. Let's take a look at watch time. As you know, watch time is measured by hours here in YouTube. It is something that is so important to them. So which means if your video has a lot of views, but people actually didn't stay on the video to watch for it is extended period of time. Uh, for me, that means two to three minutes, as you see very briefly. But if people only watch a few seconds of your video, then YouTube isn't going to incentivize you by showing your video to more people. So as you can see, there's a little bit of an upward trend there. And as you move over the cursor uh, to each and every day, you can actually see data related to that day. And down here, what's also very interesting is it shows you the video that you uploaded. If you're looking at a single play button, that means that you are uploading a video, uh, a single video right around that time. But sometimes you see four videos published. Sometimes on the same day, I'm a little embarrassed to say or admit that, but sometimes as you can see, these videos are either on the same day or they could be spanning over a couple of days. Now, next is subscribers. Subscribers are important, but honestly, personally to me, I want to thank my community. I love my subscribers. For me, the watch time really does matter. Um, and guess what? The majority of the people who watch my videos are non-subscribers. Last but not least is estimated revenue. The reason why they say estimated is because there's always a little bit behind in terms of, you know, uh, how they're measuring it. Typically, YouTube will say that there are one to two days behind uh, in terms of, uh, you, as you can see, processing um, previous two days are currently processing right now. So the data you see here are usually 48 hours behind the real data. However, there are some real data floating here on the right hand side. Uh, as you can see, these data, including subscribers, number of views are updating live as well as these top videos. Let's take a look at top videos within the period. So also within overview, you get to see the most popular videos within the period of the past 90 days. If I switch over that back to 28 days, um, the number and the type of videos actually will kind of swap around quite a bit, obviously, because different videos get picked up by YouTube at different times. And it's very surprising for me to quickly reflect, you know, my uh, pivotal moment or uh, sort of my breakthrough video is going to be this one right here published on March 21st during the peak of the pandemic. And I was trying to help fitness instructors and, and dancers in particular to bring their classes online. However, I had originally thought that would be my breakthrough video for a long time, which it did for a couple of months. But all of a sudden I have other videos that are surfacing to the top, such as how to look better on Zoom with one click. And most recently 12 Zoom meeting tips every host should know. These are really surprising. This particular video has made me, I believe, six to seven hundred dollars already, yet it did not take very much time to record at all. And we certainly did not overproduce it. So some observations there. I'm not going to go through all the advanced analytics, but I do want to give you a sneak peek into that uh, by clicking on see more right here. Now, this is something that I absolutely need and want to cover in a separate video. So this is advanced analytics. So instead of showing you the top 10, you get to see all your videos. So you scroll down all of them. Then what you need to do is you can manipulate this data by adding more metrics and you can export all of that up to 500 results. I don't think I have more than 500 videos uh, currently on my channel, but that's what you can do now. What you will see here really quickly is, of course, you can see the views, the average watch duration, as I mentioned. So my top video currently in this period not only has a lot of views, but also a very long duration of watch time. So people really stuck around and you can see here also calculated based on average percentage viewed. So I would say, you know, this uh, people watch four minutes and that will be close to 40% of that video. That's pretty high. Now there's some additional stats. I'm sure you're thinking about how much did you make on each video? So you do need to add an additional metric. I'm going to click on the plus button and right here, um, in addition to that, I'm also going to show Show you the CPM related to the video because it's definitely part of the conversation. A CPM is what advertisers will pay per thousand views. And let's add the actual dollar amount into that as well. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to click on YouTube ad revenue for you to see that. And another interesting metric I just saw is subscribers. Now, as you guys know, a lot of people subscribe to a channel based on a single video. So I just proved that. Look at that because of the single video, 12 Zoom meeting tips, every host should know, from that one video, I gained 555 subscribers. 
And from that single video, I was wrong. I completely underestimated that um, the ad revenue is $956. I couldn't believe it. This one video made me nearly a thousand dollars. Could already be a thousand by the time um, you know I'm recording this because the date data is a couple of days behind. And the CPM is surprisingly high. Usually most of my YouTube um, Zoom videos are hovering around twelve to thirteen dollars. But again, CPM really changes on the daily basis and then certainly on a monthly basis. So based on the number of views, this is how much money I made uh, based on the average uh, view duration. Because the view duration matters. If I have mid-roll ads, which means they're ads in between you know, the beginning and the end, the longer people watch the video, the more likely they're going to watch the ads as well. So those are advanced analytics. I do want to show you guys also on reach. That's the second tab here. This is where you get into some of the nitty gritty stuff. That's quite fascinating. Reach on the impressions. Uh, in the past 28 days, again, 28 days, I reached 1.4 million people. That is that has been increased 75%. Now, what is impressions? That doesn't mean that people clicked on my video. People only saw my video in terms of a thumbnail. They could be on a playlist, could be on a recommended list somewhere. They saw it, but they didn't necessarily click on it. Now, what really matters is the click-through rate. You can see that there's a slight drop. I'm not surprised by this because I decided a couple of months ago with my producer, Herman, that our channel isn't only going to be about Zoom. That part was very important because we're passionate passion about entrepreneurship, passion about live streaming and helping people really thrive online, bring their business uh, online. So the moment we start pivoting uh, content topics, I knew the drop uh, is going to happen with the click-through rate. If I continue to create Zoom content almost no matter what, the click-through rate is very high. Next is a number of views, and these are correlated information, obviously. So 111,000 will be uh, the click-through rate as a percentage of the total impression. So unique viewers, that's interesting. Unique viewers means that if you know Joe Schmo decided to come back and watch the same video three times or watch you know different videos uh, by himself, then you know the number of unique viewer count is only one. The traffic sources is something that any YouTube creators and including, yes, if you're brand new to this, you want to pay attention to YouTube search. That means somebody's literally going to YouTube, going to their search box and searching for a specific topic. Now, second suggested video. This is huge views from suggested appearing alongside or after other videos. These are the recommended videos and it plays a huge part for the content I'm producing. Next third on my list is traffic from websites and apps and embedded videos. So I do embed all my YouTube videos on my website under blog posts because why not? It boosts um, you know, rising tides lift all boats. And that's absolutely true. As a result of YouTube, I now see a lot more visibility and engagements on my website as well. Let's take a look at browse features. To be honest, I have not really paid attention too much to these categories. So browse features are traffic from the home page, home screen, the subscription uh, feed and other browsing features. But there are more that you can also click on and you'll also be taken a view that probably seems a little bit familiar to you compared to the advanced view I was just showing you. So definitely uh, continue to explore. I have to do a different video on this as well. So let me know if this sounds interesting. Now, what's also very visible and helpful is impressions and how they led to watch time. So I love my producer, Herman, uses a metaphor, which is YouTube looks at your video based on click-through rate, based on watch time. It's like a faucet they turn on and off. So if people showing interest and they like your video, they watch it, and they will keep showing your video to other people. Otherwise, they're going to turn that down. It's a little bit sad, isn't it? Um, so that gives you a lot of information. Uh, traffic sources, playlists, very interesting. Um, so some of these playlists are created by me, some are not. Um, traffic sources from suggested videos, portion of my total traffic. So as you can see, other people um, produce videos, of course, and as a result, my videos are recommended at the end of their videos or on the sidebar. So there are a lot of information you can get from here, right? Uh, for example, by looking at seven Zoom meeting tips every user should know, maybe you can create eight tips. You know, you can really learn a lot from these type of um, resources and, and tips. 
Let's take a look at engagement here. Again, engagement is all about watch time and average view duration. Uh, you probably don't see too much fluctuation happening here, and that makes me happy. But let's say if for a period of time, clearly there's a dip, um, I will want to look into it, right? So for example, let's see, there's a little bit of a dip right here. And um, I added a video called how to add chapters to YouTube. I was pretty passionate about that feature. I probably need one for this video because it's running pretty long. Uh, but you can understand that why all of a sudden there is a dip. So of watch time, you can also take a look at the average view duration. It's actually pretty even to my surprise. Um, again, don't be paralyzed by the number. Sometimes you can't always predict why the users behave a certain way and why YouTube um, is showing some of the videos, but not the others. Quickly scrolling through this information with anything that seems interesting. Again, you want to learn more about, please let me know. Top cards. So these are the info cards that you insert uh, in the middle of your video so that people can explore other types of content. I definitely know that I've been using, uh, in particular, this video a lot, how to teach dance and Zumba class live with Zoom, Zumba. So as you can see, people did click through uh, this card quite a bit. So audience is really about the people, the unique viewers, which we talked about briefly in the number of subscribers, and it certainly changes um, over time. What I have noticed is that there tend to be more subscribers during the week, Monday through Friday, and a little bit less during the weekend. I guess probably also because I don't constantly release content on Saturday and Sunday necessarily, but I'm going to moving forward. Now the behavior is uh, also interesting. My viewers are on YouTube. As you can see, the darker purple shows that there are very many any of my viewers on YouTube. Um, I don't know whether because I do tend to release uh, videos around noontime, but also a lot of my viewers are on the West Coast where I'm on the East Coast. So um, you can imagine that there are people who may be watching videos at a later time or when I'm releasing videos right around noon, then my viewers in California are just waking up and started their, their process of watching my video. So subscriber bell notification, this is something that you tell your subscribers um, or future subscribers to turn on notification. So as you can see, uh, compared to my channel, uh, subscribers who turn on all notifications for my channel, my goodness, is 10%. And I kind of like that, even though the typical on YouTube will be 10 to 30%. Now let's take a look at subscribers who turn on all notifications for my channel and enable YouTube notification, it's 7.5%. This is pretty much in alignment with um, the typical stats on YouTube. Watchers, uh, watch time from subscribers versus non-subscribers. As you can see, even though, even if you think my channel has over 6,000 subscribers, the majority of the traffic definitely come from non-subscribers. More reasons for you as a creator to make sure that you keep reminding people either verbally or with visual indicators on your video to encourage them to subscribe and hit the bell button. And here's the breakdown of age and gender. So uh, there's a little bit more male than female. I do tend to talk about technology and tutorials, so I'm not too surprised to see this. Uh, I'm glad it's not completely off balance. Um, so I, I like to think that I appeal to um, this audience. And in terms of age group, uh, I'm in my mid thirties. So, uh, I like to see, you know, definitely people who are 25, between 25 to, I would say 50. And this is what I expected. Lastly, you know, language considerations. I currently, I'm not hiring work with rev.com to get fully flesh, a human verified, um, closed captions and, uh, subtitles. I feel like at some point I really should, that would be a good investment. But as of right now, the majority of my videos, unfortunately do not have subtitles, but there is automatic, uh, subtitles available through YouTube. Sometimes it's just not good enough. Um, but, uh, hopefully I will get to this task at some point. So that's it. This is a longer video, um, longer winded, but I hope that you get to see uh, all the data. I think right now, especially since I've been doing this more consistently since the beginning of the year in 2020, I just want to show you behind the scenes how I'm able to grow. And even as a channel with just 6,000 subscribers with mostly tutorials, and educational content, what uh, this might be for you and what you can end up creating. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell button. I cannot wait to see you in the next video. Again, this is part of a YouTube uh, growth series, and I hope to see you back in a future video very soon.